we've covered analog video capture, let's go ahead and cover digital video capture. Now, if you've tried to uh, import with DV or if you've done a little searching on the web for people who uh, have done DV capture working with Cinelera, you'll probably notice that nobody seems to be able to actually do it in Cinelera. It has the options, uh, nobody can make it work as far as I've been able to tell. I sure can't make it work. So uh, everyone on the tutorials out there is directing you to use some uh, third-party software. Usually you're going to have you know, the command line like DV Grab or Kino is very popular. Uh, so let's head on over and install Kino and get things working. Okay, we're going to install a piece of software called Kino. It's a digital video editor, actually. You can import, you can export in multiple formats. Uh, it even has its own editing, transitions, some effects. Uh, you know, it's not similar, but it's, it's good if you just need to do something pretty basic. Uh, if you have any questions on the additional functionality of it, just go to www.kinodv.org, and they have all the hair how-tos and whys and FAQs and uh, downloadables. Now, if you're using a Ubuntu derivative, which you probably are, uh, getting it is just as easy as uh, sudo apt get install kino. Or you can use your favorite package handler, or you can uh, you know, click and run .com, uh, cnr com will get you that. So, let's say that we went, we went ahead and we have this installed. And let's bring her up. Go to the desktop. And launch it. Okay, first thing you want to do is set it up for working with uh, your setup. So what we're going to do here is go to the defaults. On the defaults tab, that's where you set your normalization, NTSC or PAL, uh, your default audio sample rate, and uh, your aspect ratio. I do 16 by 9 because that's what I have my digital camera set up for all the time. Uh, next thing you want to do is go over here to display. Now by default, your quality is not going to be set to highest. You want to set that to highest. Also, here you can select that you want to uh, go ahead and watch the, uh, the preview of what you're capturing on your computer rather than having to flip out the screen. Next thing we're going to do, do is go over to Capture. Now, if you have seen these videos uh, or these tutorials on the net, uh, you'll see that everybody says get it in digital video format and then convert it to MOV because MOV is similar as native format. It's my experience that either that was the way it was then because of the lack of functionality in Kino, uh, it's just not the way it is now. Uh, essentially, MOV is just a package, just like ABI. You can have different kinds of streams in it. And as long as the stream that's in it is raw digital video with two's complement uncompressed audio, you're fine. I haven't had any problems working with Simulera. So what we want to do here is get it in a format that has a separate audio stream and separate video stream. And that is going to be the uh, ABI DV ABI Type 2. Cinelera won't work with Type 1. By default, this is going to save it to raw DV and then you can export it. But you know, hey, it's an extra step. Why worry about that? Also, you're going to notice on this tab that you have an option to auto split files. What that's going to do is it's going to generate a new file based on the original file name we put in, in this case, test001.avi, test002.avi, every time you hit record on your digital camcorder. For the way some people do videos, that's going to be a really good, convenient way to edit and know where you are, get things in a similar in the form of clips. Uh, for me, that ends up like 60, 70 takes per project, and that's just too much to keep track of. I found that with uh, at least the earlier versions of Similar, once you hit about 15 minutes, it would crash. Uh, any video that went into it that was 15 minutes um, would make Similar go away as soon as it hit that mark. It didn't matter what the size or the format. So uh, what I did is uh, set it for about 10 minutes, it's going to generate a new file. It's uh, 18,000 frames, roughly. And uh, that gets me format that is good for me to work with. Uh, for you, just try whatever works for you. Also, uh, what I like to do here is you can see that you specify the file and where it is without the extension because it's going to save it in ABI automatically. If you put ABI on it, it's going to be .ABI.ABI. .ABI. Uh, so we are going to browse over here. Let's go to like my B hard drive. And uh, right now it's set up for B day because I was doing a birthday. <laughs> B day. <laughs> okay. So 
we're going to name this test. And then you click OK. Now, as you're going to see when we go over here and get ready to capture, when you capture, you've got your AV controls listed. That means that your uh, digital camera is hooked up and you can see it. Uh, also, down here, you have the option to do the same thing. Specify your file. I like to do it in the beginning just because uh, it gives me a chance to double check that it hasn't changed from the format that I want it to be. Um, so what you do is we uh, just click on the arrow down here. It's really pretty self-explanatory from this point. Uh, go to the beginning of the scene that we want to capture, and then uh, hit the capture button. There we go. It's capturing. Um, hit the stop button when we're done capturing. And that's it. Uh, now we have a file over on HDB1. We'll just go over here and open up that window and see. There it is. Uh, now you close Kino. And it's going to ask if you want to save the project. You don't because you're not doing the project. All we did was use it to get the video onto the computer. And that's it. Uh, you are ready to pop that sucker into Cinelera and start editing. So uh, let's go back over to the other room and uh, give me an excuse to use that nifty teleport effect again. Did you know in the entirety of Star Trek, uh, no one ever said, beat me up, Scotty? Yeah, it's true. So that's it. We can get uh, digital or analog video onto the computer ready to go in Cinelera. And this is going to be the uh, last tutorial on capture before we start install installing and compiling Cinelera for your computer. So about to start the Cinelera tutorials. That's going to be fun. And uh, I'm going to put a link over here uh, to uh, a video. I think it's from the source. It's a it's a Linux journal, and they did a bunch of tutorials. Really more of an introduction to, to Cinelera. Shows you the basic structure, how it works, some of the basic functionality. And uh, just go ahead and link that over there so you can check it out. I'm not going to lay a lot of the other tutorials because they're kind of uh, kind of outdated, I guess. I, I found some ways to do some stuff that's, you know, sometimes a little bit easier, sometimes not. I'll chunk those at you as it comes. But yeah, uh, that's your homework. Check out that. And uh, it's about 90 minutes. It's a good watch. And that's it for this edition. Uh, see you next time when we compile and install Simulera.